Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Hey, these guys look like radicals to me. And they're expressing themselves. This must be radical expressions. But this isn't political science class. So we're not going to talk about radicals expressing themselves. We're going to talk about radicals and simplifying radical expressions. And when this lesson's complete, you'll understand that when a radical has been simplified, there are no perfect squares left in it. There are no fractions in the radicand. There are no radicals in the denominator. And you're also going to learn that you can treat the radical as if it were a variable in addition and subtraction. First, let's review the product and the quotient properties of, of radicals. The product property of radicals says that if I have the square root of a times b, I can rewrite that as the square root of a times the square root of b. For instance, the square root of 15, well, I can factor 15 to 5 times 3. And then I can rewrite this as the square root of 5 times the square root of 3. The quotient property of radicals says that if I have the square root of a divided by b, I can rewrite that as the square root of a divided by the square root of b. For instance, if I had the square root of 3 fifths, that could be rewritten as the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. Well, now I think you're ready for the rules, the rules of simplifying radicals. Do not violate these rules. If you're asked to simplify a radical, that means when you get done, there should be no perfect squares left. If I had the square root of 16 times x, I'd need to get rid of that perfect square, that's 16, and rewrite this as 4x. Rule number two. There can be no fractions inside the radicand. If I had the square root of 2 fifths, I would have to rewrite that as the square root of 2 over the square root of 5. Rule number 3. There can be no radicals in your denominator when you finish simplifying a radical expression. If I had the radical expression 2 over the square root of 5, I'd need to get rid of that square root of 5 in the denominator. And how can I do that? Well, hopefully you remember that the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 equals 5. So if I multiplied that square root of 5 by the square root of 5, I'd get rid of the radical in the denominator. Now, I'd also have to multiply the numerator by the square root of 5. And when I got done, I'd have 2 times the square root of 5 divided by 5. The last rule that you need to remember to simplify radical expressions is that you can treat the radical like a variable in addition and subtraction problems. For instance, if I had 5 times the square root of 3, minus 3 times the square root of 3, I could treat that the same as if it were 5x minus 3x, which would be 2x. 5 square root of 3 minus 3 square root of 3 equals 2 square root of 3. Well, let's use these rules, which I've cleverly put down here at the bottom for you all to see. Let's use these rules and simplify this expression. 9 times the square root of 32 plus the square root of 2. 
Well, I don't see any perfect squares. I don't see any fractions in a radicand. I don't see any radicals in, in a denominator, and I really can't add those two because I don't have a like term. I've got a square root of 32 and a square root of two. So what, am I lost or am I done? No, I'm not. First thing you wanna do is to factor that 32. Now I can't factor this two. That's already down to a prime number. But this 32, I can factor that. So that's what I'll do. And rewrite this as nine times the square root of two times two times two times two times two, times two plus the square root of two. Now, I've got two two times twos. I've got two perfect squares. And I'm not allowed to have any perfect squares. So I can take those out of the radicand and for each pair of twos on the outside of the radicand, I'll have just a single two. So I've got two pairs of two inside the radicand. I'll have two twos outside the radicand and it'll rewrite as nine times two times two times the square root of two plus the square root of two. That simplifies to 36 times the square root of two plus the square root of two. But now I can treat my radical like it was a variable and I've got 36 of these square root of twos and I wanna add one more square root of two. So my answer will be 37 times the square root of two. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Simplify the square root of 81m cubed. Well, let's consider our rules. Our first rule is we can't have any perfect squares left in a radicand. But I can see I've got 81, which is 9 squared. And I can see that I've got 3m's, which includes a square m plus an extra m. So I can rewrite this as, no, as the square root of 9 squared times m squared times m. And then for each of those squares, the 9 squared and the m squared, I can pull out a 9 and an m and rewrite this as 9m times the square root of m. Here's three you can practice with. Hit your pause button, simplify each of these three radical expressions, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. All right, we'll start with the square root of 50. There's no perfect squares in there. There's no fractions in the radicand. There's no radicals in a denominator. So I need to factor that 50 to see if there's anything I can do with it to simplify it further. And I can. I can change that square root of 50 to 25 times 2 or 5 squared times 2. Now I've got a perfect square that I can pull out of the radical and rewrite this as 5 times the square root of 2. This expression, 5 times the square root of 2, can't be simplified because I have no perfect squares inside the radical, inside a radicand. I have no fractions inside a radicand. I have no radicals in a denominator, and I've got no radicals that I can add together. So five times the square root of two is simplified. How about the next one, the square root of 125? Well, again, I need to factor that 125, and it's 25 times five, or five cubed. Now I've got three fives, so I can pull two of those fives out and make it a single five, and that simplifies to five times the square root of five. The last one's a little harder. I've got three times the square root of one-fourth x cubed. And I can see I've got a fraction inside my radicand, and I gotta get rid of that. So in my head, I'm gonna change that one fourth x cubed to x cubed over four. And then I'm gonna use the quotient property of radicals and rewrite that as three times the square root of x cubed over the square root of four. Well, I've got a couple of perfect squares there. I've got two x's among those x cubeds uh, above 
and I got a perfect square in that four. So I'll pull an x out from above, and I'll get the square root of four, or two for the denominator. And now I've got three times x times x, the square root of x, over two. And I'm just going to simplify that to one and a half x times the square root of x. You try this one. Hit your pause button, simplify this expression, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, I can see I've got a radical in my denominator, and I need to get rid of that. But it's pretty easy to get rid of radicals in denominators if they're just simple radicals like this, this the square root of 3z. I'll just multiply that times the square root of 3z, and I'll get 3z. Of course, I've got to also multiply my numerator by the square root of 3z. So, I'll multiply 1 over the square root of 3z times the square root of 3z over the square root of 3z. And my numerator will become the square root of 3z, and my denominator will be 3z. And that is simplified. I think you're ready for a tough one now. Simplify the square root of 10 over 7 minus the square root of 2. I'll give you a hint. a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. Hit your pause button. Try this problem. And then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. If you get this one right, pat yourself on your back. Because you're a smart cookie. you got to think about something we learned quite a while ago in order to figure out how to get rid of that radical in the denominator of this problem. Because that's our first problem. How do I get rid of the radical in the denominator? I can't just multiply it by a square root of 2. If I did, I'd have 7 times the square root of 2 minus 2. I'd still have a radical in my denominator. Well, maybe you'll remember, and hopefully you remembered, that if I've got the uh, binomial sums and differences, and I take the product of them, I get a two-termed binomial. If I were to multiply 7 minus the square root of 2 times 7 plus the square root of 2, my answer is 7 squared minus the square root of 2 squared, or 49 minus 2. And there are no radicals in that denominator. Now, of course, I've also got to multiply my numerator times 7 plus the square root of 2. And then I can simplify this to 7 times the square root of 10 plus the square root of 2 times the square root of 10 over 49 minus 2. Now, it seems to me I ought to be able to simplify this further. And I can see that I could break that square root of 10 up into the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 and then rewrite this as 7 times the square root of 10 plus the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 over 49 minus 2. Well, now I've got a perfect square. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is just 2. And I can rewrite this as 7 times the square root of 10 plus 2 times the square root of 5 over 47. Well, that's our lesson on simplifying radical expressions. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and there you'll find some worksheets and quizzes on this subject. I hope you had a good time and I hope we see you again real soon.